All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good noon, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the time of the day that you are watching this video and hearing my voice. So for today, we will be discussing habitat loss, alteration, and fragmentation. So we have here um, these three, again, the habitat loss, alteration, and fragmentation. These are the ecological phenomenon that would greatly affect our entire ecosystem. So let's first um, discuss each of these. So we have here our learning objectives, by the way. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to first illustrate before and after effect of habitat loss, alteration, and fragmentation. Next is to determine the human activities that cause these environmental damages. So what are the things that we do that can induce these damages? And next is, of course, since we already have tackled or after we tackled the problem, we will be presenting some possible environmental protection measures that can preserve different species of flora and fauna, flora for um, animals and fauna for plants, affected by habitat loss, alteration, and fragmentation. Okay. So human activities, guys, have caused so much changes in the ecological balance without realizing all the environmental damages that we cause in our ecosystem. So in most cases, it is our concept of the world development that push us to alter out our surroundings for our own benefit and at always at the expense of other living entities, especially the species of flora or plants and fauna for animals. So because of the changes that we do in our environment, we also have altered our ecological balance. So how do we change our environment? It's due to the, or it's through the development that we push. What kind of development, sir? Industrialization, agriculture, fishing technologies, and etc. And because of the, or even hydropower plants or electric, any kind of electric power plant. So because of the industrialization and the development that we have, what we do is that we consume land resources or even water resources. And that would lead to a different climactic um, factors. What would happen is that it can alter the factors in our environment. So because of the development that we have and because of the expansion of the different industries, we tend to alter our ecological balance. Now, how do we do that? So as you can see here on the picture, we have here a traditional environment having a healthy biodiversity. And because of the new ways and techniques that we do in order to improve our lifestyle is we have developed way of agriculture and different kinds of industry. So we have here the new world. After this, ecosystem. So we tend to maximize or we tend to utilize the different land resources that we have. Now, the different conditions under this environment is different already under the conditions and the environment. It's either nag change ng temperature, nag change ng wind pattern, nag change ng moisture, nag change ng precipitation, and etc. So those are the conditions. And later on, because of the more development that we want to, what we have is we have developed more technology, different types of um, techniques, or even um, power plants that can be used in our industry. So we are embracing industrialization. And because of that, we change the conditions again sa atuang environment. Having a healthy to a semi-healthy and to a non-healthy environment. Because in every time that we change something on the environment, the interaction between the living and non-living components will be altered as well. And because of that, it would change the ecosystem in a whole 
um, yeah, kumbaga, ma-change ang entire ecosystem because of the changes that we made. And even in um, in marine guys or in marine life, so before we have traditional fishing, so makakuha lang takong sa itong ginakonsumo. And later on, we already have provided different types of boats, ships, and different ways on how we could be able to catch fish. So ang fishing industry nagagrow nga nagagrow and later on ang fish na to kay may extinct and makuhaan lang na gamay kumbaga every time nga magkuha ta og isda sa tuang dagat and we damage some corals or magkuha ta entire population of fish that would change the natural setting of the ecosystem and because of that there is what we called ecological imbalance now Let's talk about habitat alteration. So habitat alteration, guys, is a change in land or land cover that has an impact on local ecosystem. So we alter the habitat. Same gapon, just like the concept that we have did here. This is as actually one of the example of habitat alteration. Because of the development and industrialization, what happened is we tend to expand our land and we change the conditions again under this ecosystem. And then the habitat in this ecosystem will be altered. Kima-change man siya. Kina-change man ang conditions. So it's an alteration or it's a change in land use or land cover that would have an impact on local ecosystem. So, plants and animals, guys, live in specific places that have conditions of climate and food resources needed for survival. Over time, a habitat is subject to alteration, especially under the influence of human activity. Habitat alteration which may lead to habitat loss and is the greatest threat of living species. So again, because of the changes that we do in our environment, we tend to change the conditions under that ecosystem as well. And we all know plants and animals do need perfect condition para makasurvive and makareproduce. So there are some certain conditions that must be met so that a particular species of plants and animals would multiply or reproduce. So due to the alteration of habitat, of course, that would lead to extinction of species. That's why habitat alteration can lead to habitat loss. And it's a very, very great, or it's, it's a big threat, rather. Very big. It's a, it's a big threat on the living species. So that's what we call habitat alteration. Next. There, these are the human activities that can damage large areas of land and water. First is urbanization. So because of the growing population that we have, we tend to extend and to develop our different types of industry. And because of industrialization, we we'll change our lifestyle and we, we develop ng modagan ang tao, ma-urbanize ang area. Kung baga, na. So urbanization, guys, is one of the key factor nga parang uh, sa pag-change sa ito ang environment because the, the land that is supposed to be a forest will be utilized in order to create condo, in order to create school, in order to create hospitals para makaprovide og service sa people because nagataas nga nagataas ang need na to of those facilities over time because of our growing population. Next, agriculture. Again, because of the growing population, the demand of food and other resources is increasing as well. So we have expanded our land to, to be used in agricultural um, industry. So what will happen? We clear forests and we plant domestic um, plants para gamito na to siya sa ato ang food. So that's for agriculture. So what will happen? Since we clear an amount of land, it will change the ecosystem on that 
or the, the, the ecosystem of the agricultural land itself and the ecosystem of the nearby area of that agricultural land. Next, we have overfishing. So for the overfishing, guys, tungod kay daghan kay ta o ginakuha nga isda and somehow makathreat siya sa population sa isda because of the demand. And we only have a certain type of fish nga ginakaon. We don't all eat all kinds of fish. Naalang tayo mga fish nga favorable sa tuwa para kaunon. Now, what will happen? Depende na siya sa demand sa tao. For example, shark and tilapia. Kung tayo lang ha? Na kay shark or tamban. Na shark, na tamban. Because ang tao gusto mo ka og tamban, tamban siya itong dakpon. Diba? Mas, mas tamo yun ito yung dakpon demand. Now, what will happen? Kitungod kay isa lang nga ito ang fish nga ginakonsume. Kung baga, mo lang din nga mga limited options of fish nga itong ginakonsume sa dagat. What will happen? Sila atong primintikwaan. And perhaps it could lead to a small population to, uh, of the species. And now, what will happen kung gamay na lang ang population? Ang predator ato nga mga isda or nga mga marine life kay maapektuhan as well. Kaya nga naman, wala na sila eh, kaunon. And what if pag kaproblema ato mga predator, ang katuna pong predator sa predator, mga nga na, muna po ito'y mag problema and everything will be affected. So due to the, dili lang pasabot guys nga the conditions nga atong ginatanaw para lang uh, para magsustain ang isa ka ecology or ecosystem is not only the system of the interaction of biotic and abiotic component. It's the interaction of both all uh, all of among the four um, subsystems of the earth. We have biosphere, um, atmosphere, geosphere and the hydrosphere. So baka, kumbaga, there must be interaction of those para mag-work or para, para ma-met ma ang mga conditions sa mga species. So yun. So, dili lang po na siya again sa mga abiotic and biotic component. It would refer as well to the interaction between the species to its prey and predator relationship. Because again, if mawalang isa kapagkaon sa food chain, all of the animals will be affected. That's why, as part of environmentalist um, kanang principle, anything is connected to anything else. Kung na ay problema, ma magka problema ang tanan. So that's it. So these are the four, I mean the three human activities that can damage our both land and water. So next, the we have here fragmentation of habitats. So fragmentation habit of habitats, guys, is defined as the process during which a large of expanse of habitat that is transformed into a number of smaller patches of smaller total area isolated from each other by a matrix of habitats unlike the original. It threatens those animals that need a large of habitat for breeding and survival. All right. So basically, guys, fragmentation of habitats is the process from which we or the large space of a habitat is being divided into different fragments. That's why it's what we call fragmentation of habitat. Now, what will happen, guys? Again, as for the definition, it states that tungod sa fragmentation, the animals that are living in that area will be isolated. They are isolated from each other by a matrix of habitats unlike the original. So, sir, gamay naman ka ayong nga unsa. Gamay naman ka yung portion ang ikuha sa, sa, ano, sa habitat. Kidi mo na siya ingon nga unsa. Now, guys, ang kanisyang space daria that will serve as the barrier of the originally one habitat. So, therefore, ang mga animals, mo add to daria, ang uban pod kay daria magpuyo. Now, instead nga mag-meet, kidi ba ang animals kay dili sila mo adto sa lugar kung dili favorable ang environment nila now because of this fragmentation dili na good ang environment diri sa middle part para mag stay hand sa mga animals subalhin so, sila in this portions different types of woodland now ang kaning mga animals diri they are being isolated 
from each other. Kung baga, ang dri, ah, ma-isolate siya sa animals dri. Ang dri po nga, isol- ma- nga animals, ma-isolate dri. And katuuntang mga animals nga na dri, na po na to sila yung potential nga makipag-meet sa mga animals dri ah, para magpadaghan for breeding and survival. However, because we cut the habitat into fragments, the animals we, um, cannot, um, now can't able to reproduce and to, to breed because of the barrier and isolation. So that is, that's it for fragmentation, guys, of habitat. Next, we have what we call etch effect. It's actually one of the effects of the fragmentation of habitat. So as you can see here, we have here a habitat, a, a, a whole habitat. It shows here an interior space of a habitat and an exterior or edge space of an habitat. And we also have different animals who are living in the edge part of the habitat. And there are also animals that are living in the interior spaces of the habitat. Now, again, animals or the different species of plants and animals do need a certain condition to, ex- uh, to reproduce and to um, multiply and para mabuhi. And if ever na dili favorable ang environment and all of those um, uh, abiotic factors, dili mag-survive ang isa ka animal. Now, what will happen? Once we do fragmentation, what we do is that we extend or we expand the scope of the hedge habitat. Kaya apil man dari, ang, the, the former interior habitat nga na, dari, na-cut man siya until na himo siyang edge habitat. Here. And then, nigamay na dayon ang space para sa mga interior habitat. Now, kung sa may effect niya na po, kay tungod gamay na ang space sa interior habitat, animals that are living favorably in the interior habitat can't be able to reproduce. Nga naman, because mas lack na ang carrying capacity niya. Nga naman, mas gamay naman siya. So therefore, gamay na lang ang iyang makater nga animals or interior um, species of animals. So, unsa man, ang may tabo, every time nga ginakot na to ang forest, ang katung mga animals nga nagapuyo sa interior place of the inhabitat magkainay-inay po sila ka-endangered because dili na sila kapadaghan kaya tungod the conditions under that habitat are not already being met. And dili na favorable sa ilaha ang environment. And kung ingani, nagagamay ang space po sa mga interior habitats, that means na ang, ang carrying capacity sa area, mas gamay po siya. That's why gamay na po ang ilahang population. Now, if maapektuhan ang isa ka population sa isa ka animal, what will happen? Of course, it would affect other species related to that animal. And that would cause, or that can cause, ecological imbalance. So that's for the edge effect. That's, that is one of the effect as well of edge Uh, I mean, fragmentation of habitat. So, microclimatic changes, guys, like light, temperature, and wind can alter the ecology around the fragment and in the interior and exterior portions of the fragment. As what I have told you, the conditions here on the edge habitat is different from the conditions here on the middle part of the habitat. And because of the changes by fragmentation, it will also change the conditions under this area. Ma change ang light, temperature, and as well ang iyahang wind. So fires become more uh, more likely in area. I mean, I'm sorry. Fires become more likely in the areas as humidity drops and temperature and wind level rise. So because of the dropping or because of the drop of humidity sa area kay tungod gi fragment or gi cut na to ang area into fragments magkaroon ng forest fires kumbaga mas paspas ang possibility of forest fires because of lack or less humidity so that's it exotic and pest species may establish themselves easily in such disturbed environments 
and the proximity of domestic animals often upsets the natural ecology. Now, there are um, species nga exotic nga nagalive sa isa ka area. Now, because of the changes nga of the environment, unsay may tabo? Unsay may tabo? Uh, exotic pest nga species kay Alright, so unsa man ito? Ang exotic pests and species may establish themselves in such disturbed environments and their relationship with the domestic anifa, uh, animals will upset the natural form of ecology. So there would be an ecological imbalance. All right. So also a habitat along the edge of a fragment has a different climate and favors different species from the interior habitat. Small fragments are therefore unfavorable for species that require interior habitat. Mani akong giingon ganina nga, because of the fragmentation, nagka-change ang different climates. And there are some there are um, conditions ato nga favorable sa uban, but not favorable sa uban po nga species. And because of the fragmentation, it is very unbeneficial sa mga species who that are living on the interior area of the habitat. So that's it guys for fragmentation, alteration of habitat, and as well as habitat loss. So that's for our topic today. Again, if you have questions, message me and we will answer your questions as long as not a time. So thank you so much guys and you have a wonderful day.